Hi everybody, this is Michael Hildebrand and I'm your host on the Sleep Trust Podcast, where I'm talking about how to gain back trust in your ability to have a superb sleep again. In this week's episode of the Sleep Trust Podcast, we are going to talk about how we can build our sleep resilience. And sleep resilience is very important for you and me if we enter a phase of our lives where our sleep gets challenged and we try this and that and have the feeling that we're stuck, we're not making progress, and sometimes things are even getting worse, then building sleep resilience will take us to make progress again and to return back to superb sleep. What quite often happens when a sleep problem hits a person is that the first reaction is to widely ignore the fact that something happened and to simply get annoyed about it. So I'm tired, I'm not feeling good, I'm annoyed, I'm not doing anything. Um, Then at some point, people get so annoyed that they start to worry and say, okay, mm, this is happening quite often. Now I'm worried, I'm I'm kind of in a scarce city place. And then they often start to fight without thinking, doing, taking random action. And this is kind of, you You can imagine if something like this happens or happened to you, happens to us, I've been there too, then it's as if we, you know, we're wandering through a wonderful forest and suddenly you're in the swamp. And uh, what doesn't help if you're caught in a swamp is to take random, unthought action, maybe even being hectic. Uh, what's going to happen is that you're going to sink and sink deeper and deeper into the swamp And that's what we want to avoid. So there's an easy, a simple, I won't say easy, a simple three-step model that we should follow in these situations. And the first thing is, of course, to keep calm. It is to accept and embrace the fact of where we are. This might sound hard, but it's where everything begins. So the first thing is that we have to recognize and accept that we're in the swamp now. Okay, look around, see uh, and feel exactly what is going on and embrace this fact. That doesn't mean that you have to accept it or embrace it to the point that you say, oh, I love it here, I'm going to think it's wonderful. No, that's not what I mean. Uh, I'll give you a little example of my personal story. So when I had my sleep problems, the even bigger problem was a tremendous amount of pain that I had. So I couldn't sleep because of the pain and everything that built around that. And at one point, I was fortunate enough to stumble over meditation that suggested to kind of feel into the pain, to accept the pain as what it is, a signal to your body, and to really deeply feel into that pain, which is completely counterintuitive. Even if you don't think about pain, Uh, uh, consciously, you unconsciously want to fight it. You do not want to uh, listen to the pain. You want to uh, get it away uh, and so on. So this was a very, very uh, deep and uh, insightful experience because actually what happened during that meditation is that I was able to fall asleep at some point. Were my problems completely gone? No. I woke up you know, two to three hours later, because the pain uh, just kind of hit that threshold again, that uh, kind of I had to get up. But I was able to kind of accept and embrace the pain. And this is what we should do with our sleep too. So if we have a problem, we have to accept that it is how it is and embrace the fact, maybe find something, you know, positive about it. So if you have a bad night of sleep, Maybe embrace the fact and say, okay, I acknowledge that this is the case. I'm going to do something else with my time right now. Uh, I might have a harder day tomorrow, but I'm going to feel okay. And the next night I'm going to feel even even, uh, more tired. So that would be step one. Step number two is to actually build sleep trust. So we want to trust that there will be a point in time in future that things will be better. And this trust is absolutely essential. It's not just saying, yeah, yeah, I, I, I will. It, you really have to feel this. And a little sign 
of what many people do actually that is the opposite of having trust is to look at your clock at night when you wake up. You don't want to do that. If you wake up in the night, you want to trust that you will fall asleep again. It does not matter if it's 1 a.m., 3 a.m., 4.30, as long as that alarm doesn't go off, it's time to sleep. So trust that you will be able to sleep and don't watch your clock. That's a very a good indication if you have trust or not. That doesn't mean that you have to glue yourself into bed. There are nights that you might want to get up, but you do not need the clock to do so. If you feel and trust your body, another trust there, if your body or mind tells you that you're not going to be able to fall asleep again, then uh, give it a couple of minutes. And if you know that's not going to happen, get up and do something. This is the acceptance and embrace part again. Do something that is pleasurable for you. Maybe read a book, listen to some music, um, do something that's good. Maybe even have a bath in the middle of the night. Why not? And then at some point when you feel that you're getting tired again, move to bed and cast away all the thoughts that are negative. Tomorrow I will not be able, I have to fall asleep now. That's not good. Cast that away. Accept and embrace and trust. And the third thing that we want to do, and that's bringing this little resilient cycle to an end, is to acknowledge the progress that we are making. Because if we follow step one and two, of course, you have to take action. You have to do things that promote your sleep. There's a lot that you can find at sleeptrust.eu um, or on other places in the Internet where you will find good tips and advices, what you can do that actually promotes your sleep instead of um, and instead of um, letting you sink into the swamp. So pick a couple of things that relate to your particular sleep uh, sleepless cause and do them. See what's good for you, what kept, keeps your mind calm, what keeps your body calm, what you know brings you into the position to have superb sleep again and then acknowledge the progress. This is a, a conscious act to think about, okay, there was something that is has been better than the last time when I had this. Small things. Acknowledge the pro process. Super important to further build your press, uh, trust. It's kind of like a backwards loop. Um, the more you acknowledge that things are progressing, the more trust you will have that things will get better and better. And the more and easier it will be to accept and embrace uh, bad nights when they come on occasion. So this is kind of the resilience cycle all around sleep. And doing so will help you to get out of that swamp as quickly as possible. And you will, with a little bit of experience, be not only much more routine for in the, just in the case that you step into that swamp again, but you will also get a better feeling of where on that journey, on that travel that you're just uh, on, the swamps are. And you'll just kind of avoid to run into them before uh, things happen. So I've got a little tool that I can share with you that will support you in step number three, the acknowledging the process, because one essential thing that you need to do here is to measure your progress. And uh, I've got something called the Sleep Navigator that I will give to you for free. You're going to find it at sleeptrust.eu. So visit the website sleeptrust.eu and check out the show notes to this week's episode and download your sleep navigator. This is a simple Excel spreadsheet that you can use on your computer. You can also print it and use it with your pen where you will track on a daily basis what you're doing and what works and what doesn't. And to give you a little bit of context around this, the sleep navigator is part of step number two out of a proven nine step process that I use for each and every of my clients to walk them through from often very low energy levels, feeling fatigue at daytime, bringing them up to those high energy levels, feeling good again. So the sleep navigator is an Excel spreadsheet that you can use to track the things that you are doing to improve your sleep quality. 
and it brings these things into relationship to the sleep quality that you are actually experiencing, letting you know what exactly helps you to improve your sleep and what doesn't. And of course, you want to do more of the things that help you. We're talking about this today and um, I'm mentioning this today because it will help you to acknowledge the process, which is step number three out of the resilience cycle. So if you measure the things that you do, it will be much easier to acknowledge the progress that you are making. And um, as always, you've got the choice. You can say, okay, I'm just going to kind of take action as I'm doing it. I'm going to do it my way. That's fine. You can take that route or you just choose the easy way. Take the proven process. Listen to this podcast. You did this so far. Download your free cheat sheet, so to say. Download the Sleep Navigator. You'll get it for free at sleeptrust.eu. And I'm going to link it up to the show notes. And with that, let's wrap up this week's episode of the Sleep Trust Podcast. If you feel that you're in the sleep swamp at the moment, then sleep resilience is a thing that you want to build. You can do so by following a three-step process, which is accepting and embracing your sleep problems, trusting that you will be able to return back to superb sleep in future. Don't check your clock at night. And step number three is to acknowledge the process best by measuring your results. Don't forget to download your free sleep navigator at sleeptrust.eu and the show notes. I hope you enjoyed yourself and that you tune in next week when we are going to talk about how you can use accountability to improve your sleep quality. Until then, have a superb sleep. Hey there, and thanks for listening to the Sleep Trust Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you want to get further information on this podcast or material that will help you to gain back your sleep trust, please check out sleeptrust.eu. That's sleeptrust.eu, where you will get lots of information around sleep. And here comes some legal stuff. Everything on this podcast is my opinion only, so do not take it as an advice, as I am not a doctor, nor have I considered your personal situation. If you feel that you need medical advice, please consider getting an appointment at your doctor of trust. If you want to give me any kind of feedback on this podcast, feel free to email me at podcast at sleeptrust.eu. I hope you tune in again next week, and until then, have a good sleep.